So welcome. I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, Prescription for Your Transformation, Real People, Real Success, and Real Conversations. And so as a plastic and reconstructive and regenerative surgeon, having done this for you know quite a number of years, actually, uh, now over probably about 35 years, I fully appreciate the, the value and the pro progress we've made in, in medicine. But what's interesting is this is that medicine certainly doesn't have all the answers. And, but there are answers out there. And the question is, where are they? How can we find them? And the truth is, is that for thousands of years, the ancient healing arts have done amazingly well with um, taking care of people. And this is an interest in so many people today, simply because medicine, as I mentioned, doesn't always have the answers that we're looking to have. And so currently, a lot of people are tapping into this um, space of what they call complementary and alternative medicine. And some people just, you know, are kind of dubious about the value of it. But truthfully, the value truly is there. And today is an example of that. And I'm very delighted to be introducing Cho Lin Mei, or Cho Lin Moy, who has really experienced um, so many uh, successes in the world of ancient healing arts, but not only because of her dedication and commitment to that area, but also her desire into um, tapping into other areas of life and allowing her to have a broad perspective of what she can do as a healer. So Cho, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi. <laughs> How are you? So tell 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 me. You said something to me earlier, actually, you know, um, you know, important in understanding what it is that you really do, and you talk about how we think about ourselves, and you know, as part of the reason that we have the uh, medical conditions or diseases or disturbances in our body. You know, share with us a little bit of what, what you mean by that. Um, okay, well, the, um, in this, you know, Western culture, we're very uh, medicalized and we have a, what is known as that scientific model. We really always look for things that are wrong. Um, and that's considered, you know, it's, it, it's spoken about as a broken and fixed model. And so when we go to look at our health, uh, often we are not looking at the long term of um, the best health you can be for a longer life. It's really about fixing something that's broken. Um, there's the you know the adage, if it isn't broken, then don't fix it. But then you you kind of don't move forward. And uh, looking at just eliminating, let's say, a pain, it's really kind of puts you back into a place where you were before, as opposed to, okay, where you were before really wasn't in the best state. We wanna look at more expansion and transformation. So that's a, the, the idea around health is really like very, lim, you know, very limited. And I, I don't wanna make a generalization about it, but culturally we have this attitude of um, putting things into, you know, boxes, and you know it's either exercise or it's your food or it's very everything is separated uh but that creates this um disconnectedness from ourselves so so really is that you look at the whole person you totally look at all the different aspects that are contributing to their uh, particular condition right now and I think that's so important, but, but how do you do that? That's a really good question. Um, well, when I work with somebody, I, you know, I'm looking at their entire health history. I also ask a lot about, you know, their work, their family, um, relationships. And, you know, as I'm going through, you know, their history and talking with them that, you know, observing how they, their response 
sometimes, you know, when someone says that's fine, like, no, everything's normal. That's, and I'm kind of, well, what is normal? Like, let's, you know, tease that out. Um, oftentimes people really tolerate uh, dysfunction or they tolerate pain, um, which is not, let's say, normal. It's just a, a way of tolerating and, and they can have a, a much greater expression of life, you know, health and life. Um, we've got this body that we, you know, we're living in. Um, if we want to achieve and do all of these, um, you know, goals that we have, and in particular, you know, what's your purpose that you need to be healthy and also like connected. Um, and oftentimes because we have this attitude of compartmentalizing all different aspects of our life that we disconnect ourselves from really a fuller life you know that's very interesting that you say that that we just you know become so disconnected from parts within us and and do you think it is because you know we are so overwhelmed with technology well, <clears throat> with information that almost as a defense, we have to compartmentalize these things so that we just can handle them. And because otherwise it'll be just too much. Um, I think that is a, a, the way we operate, but the fact that we think about it that way has more to do with um, you know, this kind of, I want to say scientific approach, but really like putting things into categories. So we have this ability to use our intellect and actually kind of analyze ourselves and um, look at things, um, let's say, very logically. And when we do that, we objectify ourselves, like we're, we're almost... Disasso I mean, use the word disassociating, but we really are disconnecting. So if we can talk about our arm or a particular part of our body, like our system, that it's really, we're, we're pulling out a piece. But the thing is, is that we don't exist in a vacuum. We exist as a whole. We just have this ability to separate ourselves. And you know, when I look at being like a holistic approach, it's it's not just, okay, like my whole body and being, it's really, are we connected to the whole, like all of it, including, um, you know, the, you know, the earth, nature, uh, our community, because we are, whether we believe it or not, or think about it that way, like we're, we are breathing the same air as other people. Um, we're made of the same molecules as the table. Um, and, it's, and it's really this miracle. The thing is, is we have the ability to kind of separate ourselves and think of ourselves as separate. You know, kind of like when people are in their car and they're driving along and they kind of feel like, oh, I'm in this bubble. But the thing is, is you're driving with everybody else. Right. Did I answer your question? A absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and beautifully said, by the way. And so when, when you work with your clients, you know, what's typically your approach? I mean, obviously you have your intake where you talk, talk to the world is basically and <clears throat> where the, <clears throat> where the focus is and everything else. <clears throat> and at some point, you know, just through, you know, observation and, <clears throat> and helping them, understand things, then you start educating them, right? You're kind of fading out. <clears throat> so after you've talked to your clients, <clears throat> then typically then you, you have a conversation and you start educating them. So what is it that you tell them? Um, well, I mean, I'm also doing you know, the hands-on work, like doing acupuncture, massage, um, they're in an environment which is, you know, not the same. So they're already kind of having a different experience. I look at, you know, when they're they're actually seeking 
something other than uh, the norm, I already have a, an understanding that they are awake, they're open to something different. And so how I work with them is to really, that they get to experience themselves differently. Um, and, and that's enough of a catalyst to actually be able to calm their system down and really, even if it's just for a few moments when they're on my table, to have this ex like experience of incredible relaxation and you know have their mind quiet and shift so that they can actually you know witness themselves having a, an experience that maybe they haven't had since they were a little baby even you know that just total um, sense of well-being and for many people it's such a, a huge it's like a rush because there's it makes it it, it creates this um, distinction between how they are most of the time you know kind of running around and really what does it feel like to have that experience and so um and it's 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 in their body like it's a whole body experience including their mind of course and and um i i look at them as it's all the same because we have to experience everything in our body our emotions um we talk about them separately but you know the emotions aren't out over here they're actually in here and all the cells in our body are being bathed by that, including uh, you know emotions and the vibrations of them. And so, you know, we experience life, you know, in a, as a whole. We ignore a lot of it, right. but that's our experience. And so, to you know, to help someone come back into that, or just to feel and witness that, um, that's what you know, initially what my goal is, is for someone to have that experience. You know, you said something before our show, which I thought was, you know, quite interesting and, and insightful, is that, you know, how many people just are hyper-functioning or functioning at a very high level, but in a very dysfunctional environment. And I think sometimes we actually forget that part. I think we forget, you know, the, the impact of the environment around us. And within that dysfunctional environment, will not be stressed. And so stress in of itself, you know, causes all sorts of problems. And what I like about what you just shared, it's almost like if you can change your internal state in spite of the external environment, you create a space within yourself to also heal the body. Because stress, as you know, you know, creates a lot of, you know, problems within the body. There's, you know, oxygen free radicals that are running around that, you know, cause all sorts of gluten and stuff like that, mutations of DNA. And so <clears throat> stress definitely is not, not a good thing. And so when you can change that, obviously with partly your, your presence, if you will, talking to your patients, which, you know, uh, I, I'm sensing right now because you have this understanding. I mean, you're, you worked in the healing arts uh, and you know Eastern or Oriental you know philosophy and medicine, but you've also looked into shamanism and looked at different dimensions. I think for all of us, and this was my experience, you know, growing up in the medical industry, if you will, uh, trained for 17 years and trained in Holland, where a lot of these alternative modalities um, were were very much mainstream. So they weren't alternative. They were just part of, you know, what made sense. And I think one thing that's so important for all of us is that it doesn't matter what we do as long as it works, as long as we get the results. And so many more are wanting services like yours because medicine isn't necessarily giving us the answers. And one of my personal perspectives is that I believe that the, the doctors of the future you know, will not be prescribing medications. They will not be performing, you know, surgeries. They'll be coming to people like yourself who do energy work, you know, who do manipulations with, say, or interventions, say, with massage, <clears throat> which is tremendous on so many. And one thing I don't think people really appreciate is that, 
you know, a lot of our traumas, a lot of our psychic traumas are held in our tissues and massaging releases those. And then of course your acupuncture. I mean, that's phenomenal. I don't know if many people appreciate that. So, so explain a little bit about acupuncture, because I think there's a big misconception about, you know, what that really is. And, and my experience is that a lot of people are also fearful of, of that, thinking that it's going to be very painful. Um, okay. So acupuncture is, you know, pain, is, a lot of people are, I mean, in general, people are not interested in, in pain, right? We avoid it at all costs. Um, with, with acupuncture, the, you know, the, it's, it's really a kind of stimulation. Um, when we have an ache in our body, we intuitively go to massage it or press a point. Um, the needles that are used are extremely fine. Um, so a lot of times people don't even, they do not feel the needle, they'll feel the sensation. Um, well, and, you know, acupuncture Ha works by stimulating the body's natural healing abilities. Um, that's the general, like the big, the the overarching, you know, bet. Let's say the benefit. Um, the the patterns. So, <laughs> I mean, it's. I can give a short version, or I can give the the four year <laughs> lecture. Um, no, the short version is good. We haven't. <laughs> I'll do the short version. Okay, so the meridians, which are these, we look at are these lines uh, or pathways in the body. Um, I would call them. We could call them biomaps of the body. Uh, the the idea is when even you know this is can be a very Western explanation of it but it's actually it comes from the uh you know ancient texts about how the first meridians have like started so when we look at uh when during conception you've got the cells that start to divide and they differentiate you know what's going to be the top what's going to be the bottom what's the front what's the back you know, what becomes an arm, what becomes a leg. Um, in fact, is you know, these are those, you know, stem cells that somehow have this information that then creates this human being out of all this material, which I, I find fascinating. It's just like, you know, I don't know, a few molecules that are manipulated and suddenly you have this human being. Um, so there's something that, informs let's say those cells to then become you know organs your skin your eyes um all and and to function to create that and that's you know before you're born uh and those you know looking at it are what those meridians are those are those information pathways right. after we're born our body functions differently Right, because pre pre birth we've got you know all the nutrients are coming from the umbilical cord and everything is you know growing and getting nourished from one way. Once we're born, then you know the digestive system kicks in, and they also talk about this in the a lot of the ancient texts, like the first swallow that ignites you know your the and also the first breath that gets the lungs to work. Um, and then how all of the organs will, you know, you know, start to work together and develop. Um, so what's still there are these pathways, these biomaps that are there. And so when we experience uh, an imbalance or, or illness, there are ways like a back door to come in and to actually look at what is the pattern, um, you know, from let's say the Chinese medicine perspective, which has a lot of philosophical, um, I guess you call it philosophical, but it, in fact, it's extremely accurate uh, because it encompasses emotional uh, behavior and, and different kinds of feelings and, you know, body types and, uh, you know, what's happening internally. Uh, and, and and externally, you know, with you know, with regard to seasonal and the environment. Um, so with acupuncture and even acupressure, you can actually tap into this system um, that is there 
to then, you know, trigger the body uh, to uh, recalibrate or restart so that the body will do its, its, its job, which is more life, right? To, you know, to, to work. Um, and no matter what, as you know, that the body's gonna figure a way to function, uh, doesn't necessarily mean it will function at its optimal, but will get to a place where it's functional and then, you know, move on. And so uh, doing something like acupuncture, massage, your, your diet, you know, how you think, you know, looking at your relationships, uh, your external, like taking all that into consideration creates this whole feedback. Uh, and, and so that is when we look at, you know, part like one of the, the methodologies using acupuncture is to uh, recalibrate and restart the process and actually maybe look at really where it started, not necessarily the symptoms, right? Because the symptoms are the result of something else happening, right? Did, was that a okay explanation? So I'm going to, I'm going to, analogy if you will just for for the heck of it and sure i might have a lot of people <clears throat> criticize me for this this analogy because it might be completely off base and simplifying things but it's almost like this and and you know everything's energy i mean and and it's all back Correct. and forth flow of energy and if and and i love the word that you use which is biomap and it's almost like you know our body's like our country and and each person in this country is one of the cells and all these cells are, all these people are communicating with each other and they're trading this, you know, for that money for food or money for cars or cars, you know, whatever for gas. And then <clears throat> we have these uh, roads, you know, communicating all these different areas and super highways um, <clears throat> communicating or county roads. And then when you have a blockage somewhere, then problems happen. And it's almost like with your acupuncture, you're able to <clears throat> allow that flow, that communication just to happen seamlessly. And when it doesn't happen, that's when we get. <clears throat> so this is the funny part is that our mind then, our brain then, you know, the whole control system, you know, something that supposedly happens in Washington. And when they get it wrong, then nobody <laughs> gets it wrong. <laughs> so. You know, sometimes we just have to fix Washington before, you know, our our country or <clears throat> our bodies can be healthy. And right. what I like about what you sh what you shared though is, you know, it's it's amazing that entire process by which bombs and we understand so little of it, and to ignore the thousands of years of empirical data that the ancients, the Oriental people, have done. And just mapping, 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 you know, just by trial and error. I mean, wow, that's pretty amazing. And, and it's something that we, as, as Westerners, we've discounted for so many years. But the truth is, is that Oriental medicine and the work that you do has been proven so well and being so it's not effective. It's simply because there's other things happening as well. It's, it's almost like, you know, if you're in a kitchen and you want to, you know, bake a cake, and, and you don't have eggs and you don't have sugar, then it's not gonna work, right? Does it mean that all the products that you have aren't good enough? And, and the key here is with a master like yourself is that you get to discover holistically what's wrong with people. And so, you know, I have a lot of respect for what it is that you do because on the one hand, a lot of what you do is I'm sure is based on faith, and on the other hand, there's a lot of criticisms about what you do, but I know that you do get to help people and that must be very satisfying. Yeah, it's extremely, you know, satisfying because it's really helping people to, you know, really channel their own power. It's their power. And that is, you know, it, and, and it's part of their journey of, 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 you know, understanding themselves. So that is a, a, a really big deal. So if, if I can help somebody along just a little bit to make a, a little bit of a change, that has an incredible impact. Um, and what did I, I wanted to say about, you know, one of the things is that, and I, I, I will be talking about it in New Zealand, is that, uh, you know, when 
there's this idea like there's not a lot of research about, you know, Chinese medicine and acupuncture that, again, what it is is looking at it, out, you know, from the lens of a particular model that you can't really take the, you know, what the, the East Asian medicine is and try to squish it into uh, this kind of scientific model where you right. want to look at like one point, what does that do? Oh, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. it, it's really so, you know, tailored to the individual that to try to like take a, a way in which, um, you know, the model works with, you know, the double blind uh, placebo with medication. And in fact, I don't really think it works that well. Um, and, and to try to apply that process to everything is very, is very limiting. And, and that is kind of going back to, you know, what I was talking about earlier is like how we think about it. Um, and many times we, we might be doing the, I, I say you do the right things for the wrong reasons, right? So people are exercising and, and doing all of these other things, but that if they think of it in a way that it's so separate from themselves and not right. connecting it, that is where, you know, they, they can run into trouble and try to, you know, to try to figure out, well, what is the problem? Um, well, first of all, you have to look at everything together and not just like look at the little pieces only, you know, like separating them. You know, what's um, that at one point science thought or the world thought that the world was flat. And my belief right. is, is simply this, is that science has not caught up with the brilliance and, and magnificence of the technology of the body. And people who have just simply observed over thousands of years how the body is functioning, not trying to explain it, but realizing <clears throat> the the things that you could do, the the intervention points the, to support the body so that it can heal. So science tries to explain everything. The truth is, is that we don't have enough knowledge to really explain all these things. And so then to suggest, right. look, we need to have scientific fact to prove that this works. Well, in my opinion, the proof is, is, is in the result. If it works, great. And if it doesn't, it just means, just like with Thomas Edison, you know, to, you know inventing the light bulb. You know, this is one thing that's not going to help. Okay. So it's just a matter of someone like yourself who is able to tap into all the different mediums and all the different resources and quite, you know, honestly, perhaps just by intuition, you know, or just an energetic exchange knows, you know, what to do. And again, perhaps can't even explain it because I'm sure that's not exactly what your objective is. Your objective is not to explain everything. Your objective is to help people heal. And I like what you said. I mean, you know, we have this unlimited. We've been brainwashed, you know, not by any malicious intent, but we've been brainwashed that we don't have that power, you know, that we can't heal ourselves. And, and you and I know that there's so many people out there that, you know, were um, given a death sentence, if you will, of, of several months because of some sort of medical condition that they have only to prove those prognosticators completely wrong and, and being able to live, you know, 22 years later. How do you explain that? And so that's, again, the kind of work that you get to do. And I'm very excited that it's becoming much more mainstream, much more acceptable, because as wonderful as medicine is, it certainly doesn't have all the solutions, and it certainly has many downsides as well. And oftentimes, you know, that's a big challenge. I know that as, as a physician. So yeah. I have a question. I have a question. Go ahead. Sure. You want to say something? Well, I wanted to say, you know, I, uh, you know, there's a place for everything in it. And um, I encourage, I mean, I personally encourage my, my patients to, you know, be educated and make informed decisions about their health um, because, you know, pharmaceuticals, they do save lives. Um, you know, it, surgery intervention, it does, you know, it will save someone's life. Uh, and so you can't, you know, you can't ignore that. Um, there's a way for, you know, to 
to utilize, you know, I mean, most people, I guess you would want to avoid getting to that point where you do need a surgery or you do need um, a pharmaceutical because that's, that's not the answer. Um, but it's there for, you know, it's there to use and, and, and it's not the big, you know, evil. It's really has a, a place. Um, from my perspective is that people need to, you know, expand their awareness and consciousness around the choices that they make. Um, because they will always have a choice, but as they get further and further along, the choices become a lot more limited and they, and then they lose, you know, that part of, you know, that's the, the freedom that they have. And that's really precious. Yeah. There's an interesting law that I keep on bringing up in the show which is the law of requisite variety. And that is the system that has the most flexibility always wins. And so when we can, you know, find more choices. And, and also, as you point out earlier on, you know, finding that, that uh, uh, space of quietness, of peace, of harmony, of balance, uh, you know, within ourselves, just giving our body that opportunity to heal. Because our DNA, as well as our unconscious mind has the blueprint for a perfectly functioning body as well as the body that's functioning right now may not be perfect but it that and all we have to do is we have to tap into that you know genius inside of us if you will so that you know we can heal and again that's where people like yourselves you know approaching it energetically you know, also um, spiritually or mentally with, with their clients and, and with guidance and direction and as well as manipulations and interventions, you know, really do wonders. So I totally respect what you do, even being in the medical field for <clears throat> 17 and then uh, been practicing for over 18 years. But I totally appreciate that. And I'm blessed because I trained in Holland where all of this was always mainstream, even then. So I have a question, you know, switching gears a little bit, and I know that you're going on this amazing trip uh, to New Zealand uh, with uh, some thought leaders or transformational leaders who are really messengers, if you will, uh, sharing their, their, their medicine you know, with uh, other people and in the hopes that they can help people, you know, create the changes that they're looking to create in their own life and finding that success and finding that divine happiness. And so I'm very curious to know um, what your expectations or your outcomes or your desires for this upcoming uh, trip uh, to New Zealand. Well, I am very excited to go. Uh, I've never been to New Zealand and, um, you know, being able to have some dream time with uh, the Waitaha tribe and to also experience uh, delivering the, you know, water systems um, is really, you know, I'm, I'm, going to be amazed. I have no idea what to expect. So I'm very open. Uh, I do know um, Robert and Sprite because I was on a, a journey with them uh, this past uh, June in, uh, in California. And uh, it was really an amazing experience. So all I know is that I'm going to have an amazing experience. And uh, just being in the company of, you know, the participants, that, you know, have an expanded awareness and are interested in really, uh, you know, making change, you know, facilitating change for people and, and in a big way, you know, mm -hmm. making a big impact, you know, and, and going there, we're going to be, you know, creating a social impact too. And that's going to be, you know, a part of that growth um, to, to do it on a bigger scale. I mean, right now, I see people, you know, one person at a time. And then, you know, from that, those people go out and they do good and good and good and good. And here, you know, in, in a group setting, um, I think it's going to be phenomenal. And uh, so my expectation is going to be <laughs> that it's going to be an exciting experience. 
Yeah, I think it's really important <clears throat> with these kinds of you know adventures just to have an open mind, <clears throat> be totally receptive to whatever comes your way and and appreciating the greatness of it rather than having specific roles and expectations and be disappointed if they don't happen. And that was exactly my experience, you know, when I went with uh, this amazing group two years ago with uh, in Ecuador. That outcomes for myself, you know, one was to tap into that collective wisdom, to tap into that community <clears throat> and learn their brilliance and see how it could support them and and create what I call a gender of space. And then also to see how I get to show up. I'm totally excited by the unknown, by the unpredictability and, you know, the possibility of, of injury too. I mean, that's, that's just life <laughs> and having, having that willingness to go out there in the unknown by the wonders of, of what's out there and not only with people, but, <clears throat> but in nature and, and what's in this world. And uh, so that's really the reason for this platform as well. The prescription for your transformation is tapping into that collective wisdom of people like yourself and other people, you know, finding out what your genius is and sharing it, sharing it with other people, creating this generative space so that people can connect with you, resonate with you, see your authenticity, and realize, you know what, I, I like Cho. Mm -hmm. And let me find out more about Cho because I need her help right now. And that's what it is. If we can all help each other, you know, if we all can focus in, in a generative way and in, in, in finding solutions, <clears throat> you know, hearing new new voices, you know, finding out what we don't know that we don't know that can make all the difference. And so I'm very grateful for you today for, for being on this platform to share your wisdom. And and with that in mind, I do have two last questions. Number one. Mm -hmm. So What's the how question? How do people find you? So how do people find you? Oh, how do people find me? Okay, they find me um, mostly by referral, with by previous, um, you know, people who have worked with me or continue to work with me. Um, they'll search me out online. Uh, well, you know, my, my, review, question, you know, my, my, my sure. question more specifically: if somebody wants to con contact you. Okay. Do you have a website okay. or, or Facebook? Yes, I do. I have a website. Yeah, a website is probably easier. I mean, Facebook is fine too, uh, but probably a website. Um, my website is www.integrativehealingarts.com. Nice. And then also through Facebook. Wonderful. So <clears throat> with that in mind, my last, do you have any parting words, any wise words for anybody listening in? Um, yeah, I, I think that, you know, where they are, um, you know, in terms of if they're, if they're actually, if they're listening in, then they are, have already started to, you know, the, their interest is the beginning and uh, the first step to the next step of a little more awareness and curiosity. And so wherever they are right now is, you know, perfectly where they're supposed to be. And if they want to, you know, learn more, um, that, you know, this is a, a great start for them to, you know, start their search. Um, I know you have a lot of other interviews on your Facebook page, um, and and just really, you know, to begin to 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 look around and be curious, um, and and also to just look at you know, tolerating a, a particular level of health is really not good enough. Like there's a part where they need to uh, put themselves first, like recognize that right. you know, and, and 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 that they've got this power. Excellent. So health and power, uh, they're yours to choose and they're yours to own and they're also yours to to tap into its unlimited potential. So, Cho, thank you so much. Thank you. And I'm Dr. Bart Rademacher, Prescription for Your Transformation, Real People, Real Conversations, Real Success. I'm really excited to be uh, talking to uh, Cho Lin Moy, um, a uh, oriental <clears throat> Uh, artist in, in, or the art, oriental healing arts, if you will, or integrated healing arts. 
and um, I look forward to connecting with you in uh, New Zealand. And by the way, we'll have a live interview once again in New Zealand about your experiences there <laughs> as well. As so <laughs> okay. thank you so much. Thank you.